extreme poverty is worse than HIV itself. I also use proceeds from court cells to buy drugs that may not be available at the health center. I think that those cows will help us in the future. In the second half of 2008, Argent Action Fund Africa and ISIS Women's International Cross-Cultural Exchange interacted with women support groups in North and Northeastern Uganda to understand their post-conflict circumstances. We want to see how women who are living positively, who are looking after children who are positive, how are we coping? The findings of this interaction led to the implementation of a support project called the Intersection Between Gender-Based Violence and HIV-AIDS in Conflict and Post-Conflict Situations. By the time this project came in, we found that in post-conflict settings, the groups in Uganda had established support groups and somehow information had trickled in, but there were still challenges of making sure that um, a few things like getting services near to the women was happening. So the coping mechanisms of women in Uganda were beyond the spiritual counseling. Through this project, women were given access to modest sums of money to help improve their conditions of living day by day. A Kwenyutu people living with HIV AIDS support group in Amuria district was formed to provide care and support for women who were victims of gender-based violence during insurgency in the Teso region. Training, economic power, capacity building. With this funding, the support group was able to start a small-scale fruit-growing scheme that shall supplement their incomes and dietary needs. In November, I'm harvesting and I'm getting money. We are selling one at a hundred in the village here. But when we took it to Soroti, where the market is, we put four, that is one thousand. The National Community of Women Living with HIV AIDS in Arua has been involved in mobilization, sensitization and provision of care and treatment for its group members. We felt the best medicine was to rely on the peer support that we had and every time we are together we are looking much better every day and you know the group was like a therapy to give us the, the, the health that really we deserve. Having lost her husband to HIV AIDS, Beatrice Orodrio now lives with the disease. She and her children were turned away from their lawful home and denied property after she rejected the customary tradition of wife inheritance. After the death of my husband, I stayed there for two weeks at the graveyard. From there, my brother-in-law wanted to inherit me. I felt that I should commit suicide. I should kill my children. I just, I was completely confused. I didn't know what to do. I resort to drinking alcohol, meaning that I wanted to die. Through the project, Orodrio has had her income supplemented and now she has no more hard feelings towards her in-laws. When you don't have the heart of forgiving, you will not get more. So since I forgive those people, I forgave them. Up to this time, I am okay. In managing stigma, 
Beatrice Oradrio has become instrumental in the community counseling and sensitization program. Here I was trained as a, a home-based care facilitator. I myself also trained me as a, the counselor, to be a counselor for other friends. As a group, the sense of understanding their problems has enhanced cohesion and togetherness. We have achieved greatly. We realize the way to fight stigma, discrimination and marginalization is by stepping in the open. And that's what we did. If, you know, because the stigma was around people talking about us, and we said we are here to talk about ourselves, and we, we know what we are going through. And being able to step in the open to talk about ourselves, we're able to, you know, challenge the stigma, and therefore people give us the space to talk about ourselves and then them talking about us. One of the challenges that rural women experience in living with HIV is the sheer lack of access to treatment and medical care. In spite of their condition, they have to walk long distances to health facilities. For the Achuna Ogolai Post-Test Women's Club in Amuria District, the project made provision for a supplementary travel fund to enable women move with less difficulty. They are now able to regularly access treatment from the regional referral hospital in Soroti town. In Katakui district, the project has enabled the Usuk women living with HIV community-based group to access treatment within their locality at the Usuk Catholic Health Center. Cecilia Among, a single mother of four, depicts a strong sense of hope and regained self-confidence in the fight against stigma and fear of death. Because she was completely down and, uh, you know, even her own people could pick food and kind of push for her with a stick. I said, no, she's not yet dead, she's having hope. And we could clean for her the mouth and put she had all sores all around. And she, now she picked up. <laughs> the group was also able to provide its members with livestock. They gave us some money. We bought cows, 25 cows, two people to share a cow, which we think that those cows will help us in the future. Jerokuo Women's Support Group in Kitrum District is using the grant to run several income generating ventures. The group has, for instance, taken up small-scale crop production, growing high-demand crops like simsim and sunflower. They're also producing aluminium utensils for the local Kitku market. In addition to these ventures, the group has provided individual group members access to a revolving fund, which members can use to run personal income-generating activities. The project could not be more timely for these community-based groups whose members have had to live positively in abject poverty. To the rural village completely, these people in the first place, they are illiterate. They need a lot of support, both, you know, psychological, social, and I don't know if it could be even economic. So we think that empowering them to realize their potentials, to be able to be economically empowered so that they are self-reliant is very critical in their life to live with HIV. Because we realize that poverty, extreme poverty, is worse than HIV itself. Because poor people fall more sick, they cannot get what they would like to have, and therefore to empower the woman economically to be able to get your own things is very critical. Critical is what the Intersection Project has done for these women, 
providing them with seed fans which are enabling them realize their inner strength and esteem even with just a little income. The enthusiasm among women, even with this small grant, women with HIV from a post-conflict setting are able to stand up and speak openly and talk about HIV without fear. In fact, many of them kept on telling us that they do not think that they deserve to die. They have a lot to do. They, they have a lot of meaning in their lives. So it is important for donors to know that when we put money right into the hands of women in post-conflict, women who are vulnerable, we directly hold them accountable, they feel valued, and it can make a change.